I'll try to teach you a few important things. The first thing we will learn about the importance of pilot survey. So what exactly pilot survey is and why we do it, what are the different components and how we can uh, develop a very good pilot survey. OK, so this is uh, uh, more related to the data analysis. So we will see the type and the questionnaire data. What are the different types of the data? How we can use it in the uh, pilot survey or in the statistical analysis? Then we'll do descriptive analysis, reliability and validity analysis. OK, this exploratory factor analysis is basically your validity analysis for this. So these are the learning outcomes. So start with the pilot survey. Why we need to do and what is the importance of any pilot survey in our research? OK. The first thing, what is pilot survey? Actually, pilot survey, what we do, we, we send our questionnaire to a smaller population. To a smaller population in order to test the validity and reliability of the questionnaire. A pilot survey is a mini survey where the researcher sends out a questionnaire to a smaller sample size. OK, so that is very simple. Uh, understanding of the pilot survey. We try to set up a convenient sampling. What is convenient sampling? You can learn in the sampling procedures what convenient sampling is. But at this point, I believe you already have the sampling strategies in your mind, right? But there is one more. Step. This is called pre-testing, OK? So pilot testing comes after the pre-testing. So I will explain a little bit about pre-testing and tell you what to do with the pre-testing and then I'll go with the pilot testing. Pilot survey is to give your questionnaire to a smaller sample size to collect data, but what would be that sample size? This is a very big question. Now what minimum number of questionnaire you need to collect for a pilot survey? So mark my word here. People usually say 30 to 35 are fair enough you can collect 35 okay i agree to that statement but it depends on many other factors which i am going to explain in in the next slides in in the next uh, you know stage where we discuss about a few about the questionnaires okay so i'll tell you what would be the minimum sample size you need for a pilot survey okay it depends on the statistical procedures you are going to conduct for any data collected, OK, it, uh, no matter it is pilot or not. So even for the pilot survey, we need to see whether the test we are using meets the minimum requirement of the sample or no. OK, so the 35, 25 to 35 is the normal procedure. The people, the, mostly people can uh, use this sample size or maximum 50. So this is a normal recommendation, but as I mentioned, it depends on many other situations or factors. I will discuss these factors in next uh, slides. OK, so. <clears throat> I believe the pilot survey is clear. What is pilot survey? Why we do it to establish? It's very simple to establish reliability and validity of the questionnaire. OK, and the data collection procedure. There are two things. Reliability and validity of data collection procedure or of your questionnaire. OK, so this is how we <coughs> this is why we do. Pilot survey because we don't want to be in the situation where we we analyze everything and then we realize OK, our questionnaire is not correct. At that time, your data is already collected and you have not conducted pilot survey, then you will be in, in, in great trouble. So that's why it is better for all of us to do pilot survey uh, you know more accurately and follow the steps I'm going to teach you in this uh, session. Now let me go through quickly because uh, already uh, half an hour passed and uh, we have to discuss a few more things also and I need your input on each steps also. So that's why it, they, it may take long, longer time. So let's continue and do it a little bit uh, quick. OK. So maybe I'm just going through the information quickly. Now, when I talked about the questionnaire validation process, it depends on two step steps, not one step. OK, so we have uh, two steps for questionnaire validation. What are these steps? First step is very simple. 
we call it pre-testing. Now, pre-testing is you don't need a lot of people for pre-testing, but there are three important parts of the pre-testing: face validity, content validity, and criterion validity. These are three important concerns which you must need to check before you go for uh, pilot testing. Okay, not final survey. Final survey is third stage. First is pre-testing, then second is pilot, and then uh, you have your next step okay so let's talk about this thing what is face validity what is content validity and what is criterion validity very simple i will explain these with the, with some example also and i need your uh, you know understanding also at that time there is a class activity in this uh, session so please look at these information very carefully and discuss with me if, if you are not clear about any point. So face validity is basically the content of the test. When I say test, it is basically your questionnaire. So the content of the questionnaire appear to be suitable for its aims in general. Your questionnaire have the items or have the, the suitability uh, related to your uh, aims of the research. This is first thing. This is where I ask you, what do you mean by human recruitment determinants? So if you are talking about human recruitment determinants, but in your questionnaire you are measuring something else, that questionnaire is not valid, okay? So this is the, the face validity. How your questionnaire look like at first glance? Will, will it, uh, you know, based on the aims of the research, will it confirm the aims of the research? Something like that, okay? The second one, the content validity is the test fully representative of what aims to measure now the first one is about the aims of the stu uh, study but the second one is about the measure so for example my friend have uh, working capital strategies four or five so did he mention all these in the questionnaire and all three or four working capital strategies are being measured in the questionnaire yes or no that is called content validity okay and the third one is the criterion validity so their outcomes would be the same which we we want to measure so exactly the the, the questions are measuring what you are claiming or not okay so this is very important uh, definitions of, of these three okay so <coughs> let's take an example here I give you one example. Uh, my thesis is basically based on sustainable manufacturing performance, for example. That is my dependent variable. And if I took the definition of sustainable manufacturing, sustainable manufacturing performance refers to the production process without compromising the natural environment, society, and eco-efficiency throughout the product life cycle. Means that there are three elements in this manufacturing process. The first one is environmental conservation. You can see it from here. And then no damage to society, mean that socially acceptable. And the third one is economically viable, mean that econom economy, society, and environment. There are three pillars of sustainability. Very simple yeah. <coughs> concept. So do you understand the concept? Can you check out this definition? Because in next slides, I will show you two different questionnaire and I will ask you, can you rate the content validity, phase validity and criterion validity of each of these uh, items or questionnaires, okay? So, so can you please explain it again a little bit? Uh, uh, okay, so if, if we are talking about any, you know, uh, checking the content uh, validity and phase validity, uh, you, are you clear or I should go back on the uh, pre-testing stage? Okay, yeah, here. There's, 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 I'm, I was a little bit confused. Okay, so when we do pre-testing, we always refer back to three main criteria. Remember this point, very important point, okay? And what are these three main points? These three main points are <clears throat> face validity. Means that your questionnaire at your face, it, it looks like it is 
tally with the aims of the research, aims of, of your uh, uh, research questions or research what you are doing to uh, plan to do. OK, first the suitability. Second one, the content. Now we are going into detail. The content of each item, whether it measures what it needs to be, the aims of measuring. OK, and the finally, all those items exactly measuring the variables which you are uh, referring in your research. This is very important. And these three criteria is not just for, you know, the questionnaire. It is also for interviews. It is also for every measurement scale in the world, no matter what scale you are using. Even if you are using a meter to measure the length, it also follow these three criteria. OK, it will be face well validity, content and criterion validity. OK, so please Look at these statements. They are very self-explanatory and try to, you know, uh, apply these on your questionnaire and I will move on and we will see some examples here. OK. <clears throat> but remember again here. Uh, you know, when I talk about the face validity content and criterion validity, we need to know our variables there. Uh, dimensions and their scope. OK, if we don't know them exactly, we can't uh, tell you these three um, you know, criteria for pre-testing. OK, so although that the pre-testing is not directly part of this second, but it is important. Yes. So actually uh, by content validity, it means the contents of the questions or uh, or the uh, you mean yes. like this content of the questions. Yes. Okay, okay, sir. OK, because you have to phrase your question in a way that clearly, you know, it, it, this question is clearly relevant to measuring something. For example, if I'm I'm interviewing somebody and I'm asking, OK, do you think your industry is following standards for uh, reducing the the, uh, you know, the used material, or new material, the requirement for new material and using the unvirgin material or used material in the production process. This question is basically direct question to understand or to measure whether the company is is using recyclable material that affects the environment less that reduce the resource utilization. OK, so if they ask yes, it means that uh, they, they have uh, used material or recycled material in their production process. That means that they are not using resources 100%. They are reducing it 50% or less than that. It means that they are environmental friendly practices. So that question is basically very relevant. So how I'm going to craft that question before asking him? I need to craft even I'm doing interviews, even I'm doing uh, questionnaire. Obviously, we have to draft your, our question and that those questions should be directly relevant. That is called content validity. OK, clear. Any further question here? Can we move on? <clears throat> OK, if we move on. Yes, please, you can move. OK, if we move on, we have this. Sustainable manufacturing performance, so you can check out this definition. If you want to. Take a note on your notebook or on your laptop, please do it because there are three dimensions for this variable. Social, economic and environmental. OK, so please take a note of this. This is how you need to define your variables also. OK. OK, so we are done with this. Uh, definition. Can I move on to the example? OK, let's move on. So here I have two scales to measure sustainable manufacturing performance. Now you have three criteria. I'm asking you to tell me whether you have the, the face validity, the content validity and the criterion validity. You have marks from one to five. So for each question, for three criteria, how many marks you will give to them? Uh, I think uh, we don't go for question to question. We just go to scale by scale. So what mark 
you will give to scale one and you will give to scale two. I'm giving you five minutes to think on this. You have three criteria. What are these face validity, content validity, and criterion validity? Okay. Clear? So you need to mark them from one to five. The five is the highest possible, the good one, and one is the less good one, very poor. Okay. So from poor to very good, one to five. So what numbers you will give for each criteria to scale one and scale two? Can you prepare this on your notebooks in five minutes? I'm giving you five minutes for this. Now, this is where our operational definitions are working in. OK, my operational definition was. Do you remember we have? Uh, environmental element. We have social element and we have economic element. Do you remember in the definition? Yes. yes. Right. Yes, yes. The first one is the questionnaire is OK. Content validity is perfect. OK, and then you have uh, face validity by look one is OK, but the criterion validity is not there. Even the face validity is also a little bit issue. Why it is issue? Check this one. It all these three questions are related to environment only. Now this scale is not covering the rest of the two element which I must need to, you know, capture in terms of performance. OK, so this question, question two, scale two is capturing all three types of the performance. OK, our class reduce the level of virgin material. Obviously, this is about the resources, the environment, then employees health and safety at workplace. This is social element and the third one is the profit since last five years. This is economic element. That's why I give you this example. You can see from the face. Uh, it looks like scale one is more relevant in terms of sustainability because we have our mind that sustainability is related to environment and we are talking about these things. But when I look into the definition, the definition is not just about the environment. It is about the manufacturing process which consider the economy, society and at the same time economically viable uh, for the manufacturers also. So you can see that this is the criterion validity. So this scale one do not follow the criterion validity which is set by your operational definition. Do this. How we establish these pre-testing in our questionnaire in our research. So you need to choose four experts or maybe five, which may be uh, experts of uh, linguistics and the subject expert, the mix of language and mix of subject experts. So you can choose one or two language experts and the rest of two, three, the subject experts, and send your questionnaire to them for validation and follow their comments okay if they give you any comments any improvements you can go ahead and, and continue with those corrections okay this is how we do pre-testing so five experts minimum is is, is the requirement for pre-testing so it's not just you develop your questionnaire and you ask for uh, the data collection you need to go through the pre-testing okay clear yeah <laughs> okay, let's move on. So here we establish one thing very simple in a very simple process. Okay, that uh, we need to follow the pre-testing. Now let's move on to the pilot testing. Now pre-testing is done. Next step would be going for a pilot testing. Now pilot testing, as I mentioned, there are many concern about the pilot testing, which a few of them I will cover because. Uh, uh, it's it's uh, in this class I have to teach you how to do that also. That's why I, I'm not able to, you know, it, it limits my capacity to take everything in consideration. So I'm trying to give you the, the most important part which you must, must, must need to follow during your pilot survey, okay, pilot testing. First thing, the pilot testing is basically collection of data from a limited number of people. And then you will do your descriptive analysis just to test the normality, skewness, cortosis, all these things. Okay. <clears throat> Once you are done with this, 
you will go with the reliability analysis. We use crown by alpha uh, for this purpose or the reliability test. And the next step would be the validity. These two EFA exploratory factor analysis and CFA confirmatory factor analysis are the part of your validity process. OK, so reliability and validity of the questionnaire. This is what we are going to learn in SPSS uh, in this session. OK, so this is how we do pre uh, pilot testing. So there are two steps pre testing and the second one is pilot testing. Please remember this point. It's a very important point. OK, so let's move on to the pilot testing concerns. About the sample size. Now this is where we have a few important consideration while we are talking about the sample size. We can't consider every sample size for you know pilot survey. Yes, we can consider for example. Let me give you back <coughs> a slide. For descriptive statistics because we are concerned with the mean mod median so any number of sample is OK for me. Reliability analysis we use can alpha which is um, insensitive to sampling up to some level not fully but up to some level so that's why we don't need to go through the uh, large sample for reliability analysis also but EFA and CFA these are the two analysis which you can't perform until your sample have the limiter a minimum requirement it, it should meet the minimum requirement if you want to run the EFA OK, if you want to run the EFA. Your sample size should be more than your number of question in your questionnaire. OK, why I'm saying this when I will show you the results, you will understand that part. OK, so what is it? Your sample size must be more than your number of questions. For example, if you have 50 questions, so you can't take 35 sample as a sample because you can't run EFA for that and even the CFA would be problem for that. OK, so you need to get more sample for that. OK, do you understand this point? So most commonly when you do pilot survey, your sample should be more than your number of questions in your questionnaire. <clears throat> That is a very simple logic and technique. OK, right? So how many questions do you have? For example, you have not the demographic question. The question we need to run for the pilot testing. Not the, the age, gender, these these are all right. Okay, okay, okay. The rest of the question which you use to measure your variable. For example, I have 25 questions to measure my variable. So sample if 30, I'm fair enough. Good. No problem. We can proceed. But if it is less, you can't go uh, for the validity test. OK, reliability still we can do. But we can't do uh, validity test. That is why most of the time when we do pilot testing, we just do the reliability analysis. And at your level, if you do the descriptive and the reliability analysis, it is fair enough. You don't need to go beyond this. But for accuracy point of view, you must need to do validity as well. So I will teach you both of them. It's your choice. You want to use both of them or you can just go with the reliability analysis. OK. <clears throat> so that's that's the simple technique. OK, now let's move on. So this is the basic concern about the sample size. I, I already explained a very simple rule for the sample size. I think there should be no further discussion on the sample size. If anybody asks you, what is your pilot survey sample size? And if you say 35 and he asks why 35? Now you can give a very clear answer, right? So because my question number of questions was 30 and it is recommended that you should take any sample above than 30 for pilot survey in order to run the reliability and validity both analysis. OK, so it's simple answer. <clears throat> OK, now the second thing. A very important concern. Data type. What type of data you are collecting? That will also limit the ability of tests you are going to run on your analysis. For example, if you are running. Um, <coughs> sorry, 
if you are running correlation or regression. The analysis is correlation and regression. So in that case, regression, you can't run on the, uh, you know, um, um, non-continuous or uh, we also name it um, ordinal data. OK, nominal data, you need uh, interval or ratio data for this. So you need to understand what type of questionnaire are you using? If you are using, um, you know, Likert scale one to five agreed, strongly agreed and disagreed this type of questionnaire. This is called a Likert scale. So Likert scale is fine enough. You can use it because it follow, a, 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 you know, um, basically we follow it on based on interval scale. So we can use all the statistics, which is basically based on the interval. Scale. Although the nature of Likert is nominal, but we treat it as an interval scale, so it allows us to do all the statistical procedure. But here my question is, if you are using rating scale, so the statistics is different. You can't deal rating scale as you can deal uh, Likert scale. There are differences between these two types of the scales, okay? And then there are many, many, many different scales are there while you are developing your questionnaire. I'm not sure uh, you are using which scale, but it depends on your data, what type of data you are collecting and how this data can be utilized. Okay, remember, <clears throat> if you are using, for example, rating scale, and second person is using Likert scale, when we include that data or input that data in the system, that will reflect, for example, one to five. So one to five is same, but the results are same. The, 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 the data sheet is same. The time tree is same, but interpretation of those results is very different because <coughs> Likert scale more likely an interval scale and uh, your rating scale is more likely a nominal scale. So we need to check out whether uh, what type of the data we are using. OK, and the final concern is what type of statistics you are using. If your sample size is too low, you can just go with the descriptive and reliability analysis. So I will try to cover these two in this uh, session in this class. And if we we have time, uh, I will go with the exploratory factor analysis and CFA as well. Otherwise, we can uh, take this opportunity on some other date and try to learn these two. OK, so. This is it. Uh, the basics I discuss <coughs> the basics of data. There are different types of the data. OK, now you need to check on your. Questionnaire, what type of data you are using nominal nominal meal means red, blue, green, ordinal mean. Uh, professors, associate professors, uh, assistant professors and lecturers. This is basically ordinal data, which is in in one order. OK, interval data is based on some interval. For example, uh, disagree to agree. OK, and from agree to strongly agree. These are intervals. OK, <clears throat> and the ratio scale is a mathematical scale where most of the values are uh, you know, increase in the form of ratio. For example, if we want to take the weight, the heights, the temperature, all these they follow a ratio scale, okay? Because these uh, terms are based on some ratios, okay? So these are four different types of the data which we must need to know in which categories our questions are, okay? So uh, here I want you to relook into your questions. Relook into your scales, questionnaires, and try to find out what type of data your questionnaire have. If you are using Likert scale, it is interval. If you are using rating scale, it is ordinal. If you are using any other scale, it depends on the scale. Yeah, then you can define what type of data you are using in your uh, analysis procedure. Okay, because the statistics for each type of data is different than the others. So that is a detailed you know, topic which I can cover in, in some other day or uh, my videos are available on YouTube. You can check out 
those videos on type of the data and uh, you can understand what why different types of the data are there okay now <clears throat> final thing just to remind you what we are going to learn in the next session we, we will start with the spss first thing we will learn is descriptive statistics second thing we will learn is reliability statistics then the validity statistics but validity uh, efa i will try to cover but cfa unfortunately is not possible to cover in this session but that is also part of it i will give you an idea if the time is there okay so uh, that's it for the theoretical part i i kept my presentation so brief and so on the topic so you can just continue with the practice session and we can see how we can do these all in practical uh, approach and we need to use spss software